Hey, I'm so glad to see you today on Daily Hope. It's been a while since I've just paused to let you know how much I appreciate you. Thank you for praying for me. Thank you for supporting this work so that we're able to keep filming these. Uh, I was looking just this last week, our text subscribers, those of you who get this by text message, just surpassed 7,000. Now I know a lot of you send that on to friends and other family, and then there are social media folks who get this as well on social media platforms. So altogether, we're up over 10,000 of us a day uh, who are looking to the Word of God uh, just on a daily basis to shape who we are and how we view the world. I'm so grateful to get to be on this journey with you. Well, we've been going through the books of the Bible. Some we've been doing very quickly. Some we've been really taking a more expanded view of. We're now to the book of First Thessalonians. And I want to encourage you, we'll spend about a week on this. Would you read the book of 1 Thessalonians? I'm not going to be able to read every verse. It's five chapters. They're short chapters. And so uh, if you don't yet have a life application study Bible, we'll let you know how to get one. We'd be happy to mail you one at our cost if you're going to use it to connect to God. Uh, join me this week in just opening your Bible to 1 Thessalonians. Read through this little book with me. Uh, you could do a chapter a day if you want, uh, or you could just go however you're led. The thing that's most prominent here in the book of 1 Thessalonians is this really specific teaching about the return of Christ. Now, you've probably heard before of a thing called the rapture. Uh, it's when Jesus returns from heaven, his second coming, his first coming was what we celebrate at Christmas. After he died on the cross and rose from the dead, he spent about 40 days there. Hundreds of people saw him, but then he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. You believers stay on the earth and do my work. Well, when he returns the second time, he's not going to be a little tender baby. He's going to be a just judge and then king of kings and lord of lords. For all of us who've placed our faith in him, uh, we'll actually be raptured up into the sky. Uh, there's a lot to it, but we get here in 1 Thessalonians 4 uh, a good overview of it. And I just want you to make a mental note. 1 Thessalonians 4 the return of Christ. When you're wondering what does Christ's return look like, now you can find it in Revelation and Daniel and other places, but 1 Thessalonians 4 gives you a really succinct summary of it. Now I'm going to start here at verse 13, and what I want to do today is I just want to challenge us, you and me equally, let's really just be honest with ourselves. We mostly live like this world is our home, don't we? We've probably heard the verses or read them that this world's not our home. We're living for a greater kingdom, for heaven, but we get so caught up in the affairs of this world, the busyness of this world, the politics of this world, the heated debates of this world, the material things and the pleasures of this world that, well, we can forget these realities that a hundred years from now we'll be alive, but not in these bodies. We'll be in glorified bodies, uh, that we will all give account to God at the end of our lives, that there is an eternal life. Now, we can lose track of these things or we can just kind of deprioritize them. So here's my heart for you today and the next five or six days as we go through 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Would you just join me in a prayer that says, God, help me to see my life and this world the way that you see it. Let's just make that our prayer. And with that, we'll kick off verse 13 here of 1 Thessalonians 4. Paul's writing, he says, Now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died or who have fallen asleep so that you will not grieve like people who have no hope. Now, here's the context. Uh, the Thessalonian church, they were young believers. They didn't really have a full biblical worldview yet. They knew that Jesus was returning. Now, keep in mind, for them, he had just ascended up into heaven, what, maybe 30 years ago? So they're expecting he's probably going to return in our lifetimes. Well, then one of their family members dies and they think, wait, I thought Jesus was going to return. Why did someone I love die? He hasn't returned yet. And they started to get confused. So Paul writes this letter to explain, we don't know when he'll return. And some of us will die before he returns. We'll essentially fall asleep, Paul says. Uh, but when he returns, all these things will happen. We'll get into those in the next days. Uh, this verse 13, he says, when you lose a loved one and you know that that person had placed their faith in Jesus, you don't have to grieve like people who have no hope. 
you'll still grieve, but you'll grieve with hope that you'll see them again. In fact, let's unpack that a little more tomorrow. I'll see you then for more Daily Hope.